Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to this press briefing for the celebration of the 100th anniversary of the Communist Party of China. The CPC will soon celebrate its centenary. For today, the press center is having its first press briefing to update you about the work of party history and literature and also take your questions. We have with us today President Xu Qingshan of the Institute of Party History and Literature of CPC Central Committee, Director Jiang Shuping of the Third Research Department of the Institute, Director Yang Mingwei of International Cooperation Department of the Institute, Deputy Director Liu Ronggang of the Seventh Research Department of the Institute. First, let me give the floor to President Chu Qingshan. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. As the people across our country are about to celebrate the joyful occasion of the centenary of the Communist Party of China, I am very glad to have today's opportunity to share with you the latest progress in our work related to the party history and literature, especially what we have accomplished at the Institute since its inception. Let me first express, on behalf of the Institute of Party History and Literature of the CPC Central Committee, most sincere gratitude for your attention and support to party history and literature work. Since the 18th Party Congress, the CPC Central Committee, with Comrade Xi Jinping at its core, has attached great importance to party history and literature with his vision for the party and our country as a whole. General Secretary Xi Jinping has given many important elaborations on the history of the party. He has taken full stock of the glorious path and impressive accomplishments of the Chinese people under the leadership of the party. He has made profound summations of the theoretical breakthroughs, experience, and progress that the party has achieved at its various historical stage. And he has elaborated on the party's historic contribution to the Chinese nation and the Chinese wisdom and solutions for issues facing the humanity. The undertakings of the party and the Chinese people enjoy promising prospects. This February, specifically 20th of February, the CPC Central Committee has decided that the party shall have a special campaign to study party history. General Secretary Xi Jinping gave important remarks requiring all party members to study the party history, to enhance understanding of theories, strengthen confidence, promote morality and ethics, and work in a solid way. He put forth specific requirements for the party members to deliver for the people and make new progress in our work. The important elaborations of General Secretary Xi Jinping about the party history are of great vision, rich content, and profound thinking. They represent the guidelines for the party to study history and for us at the Institute to advance party history and literature work. In March 2018, 
the CPC Central Committee, with Comrade Xi Jinping at its core, decided to set up the Institute of Party History and Literature. And this certainly is a major decision. In other words, my institute is a new one established in March 2018. The CPC Central Committee has made it clear that it is important to coordinate the research of history, literature editing and translation resources to build up the party's theoretical research system, to combine theoretical research and practice, and to provide a high-quality research platform of the party's history and theories. And this, we believe, has been a major decision of great significance. Since the Institute was established, we have followed the Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era, served the overall work of the party and the country, worked in a coordinated and focused manner, and have made solid progress in the research of the party history, the editing and translation of party literature, and have broken new ground in the party history and literature research. Specifically, we've been working along the following lines. First, we've been studying and implementing the Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era, advancing the editing, research, translation, and promotion of the important writings of General Secretary Xi Jinping. In recent years, we have taken it as our primary task to edit and publish the works of General Secretary Xi Jinping and to do research on and promote the Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era. We have co-published books such as Xi Jinping on governance. The first, the second, and the third volume has been published. We have also co-published the important elaborations by Xi Jinping on staying true to the party's funding aspirations and mission. In addition, we have edited and published 37 works by General Secretary Xi Jinping, including those on deepening reform, on building a law-based country on the Chinese dream of the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation, on rejecting formalism, formalism and bureaucracy, on coordinating epidemic control and social and economic development, among many others, and altogether Actually, 66 books have been edited and published. We have been strengthening the research on the Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era, and we have completed studies on General Secretary Xi Jinping's important elaborations about the great struggle, great project, great undertakings, and great dream of the nation. And on every major occasion of the publication of these books, we have also forwarded related notes and essays on the mainstream media. And those essays, we have put them into five volumes of collections to better help party members to study 
General Secretary Xi Jinping's important thoughts. In recent years, we have also taken many measures to communicate the party's theoretical innovations to the outside world. We have led delegations to African countries, such as Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, and Zambia, among others, to promote Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era, especially his vision for building a community with a shared future for mankind. As you can see, those countries include English-speaking countries and French-speaking countries. And to communicate with the people in these countries, we have also uh, organized some ceremonies to launch our books. We have also translated a number of books on topics such as coordinated efforts on epidemic control and promoting social and economic development. And all those publications have been warmly received by the local society. Some of the delegations I have uh, led them myself. So we have, by all these efforts, been exploring the better ways we can communicate with the international audience about our work. Second, we have focused on our primary mandate of research on party theory and history and moved forward on literature editing, translation, and party history education and promotion. A lot, of, uh, a lot has been accomplished on this front. During the recent years, we have steadily advanced the compilation of a succession of books on party history, such as the one on the 90 years of the CPC, which is actually um, so far the most authoritative work about the party history. We have also published the timeline of key events since 1979 and since 1949. And we have also published the timeline of the major events of the CPC during its centenary, during its uh, 100 years. And actually, this book will be published today. It will be promoted by Xinhua News Agency and quite a number of mainstream media outlets. Altogether, it has 10,000 words. And the timeline will cover from the funding of the CPC to this year. We have also advanced the compilation of the works, biographies, and archives of the early generation of the Chinese leaders, such as Mao Zedong, Zhou Enlai, Liu Shaoqi, Zhu De, Deng Xiaoping, and Chen Yun. We have edited and published the collections of key literature since the 18th Party Congress and 19th Party Congress. We have also edited the translations of the translation of the writings of Marx, Engels, and Lenin for all these works, but we have been doing the translations of these books. We have also translated the important documents of every year's MPC and CPPCC sessions and the party's congresses as well. We have been advancing the collection and data 
resources of the party literature. We have also speeded up the phase two project of Marxist classics. And let me also take this opportunity to update you on one thing. At the beginning of this year, we collected from other countries the French, uh, the six original letters in French actually written by Karl Marx. They were letters between him and publishers. And these six letters, we've been, uh, we have collected them, and they are on display in the ongoing exhibition of CPC history. In recent years, we have also launched a number of research programs on key topics, such as the governance by communist parties, Marxist research in other countries, and the historical accomplishments and experience of the CPC at its centenary. Some of our research outcomes have been published and they have also served as an intellectual backup for the CPC Central Committee in its decision making. In recent years, at major historical anniversaries, such as the 40th anniversary of the reform and opening up, and the 70th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China, we have contributed to the relevant exhibitions and documentary production. We've also played a part in major event commemorations. We have also actively participated in the commemorations for the 70 fifth anniversary of the Chinese People's War against the Japanese aggression and the 70th anniversary of the Chinese People's Volunteers Army entering the DPRK to fight in the war to resist U.S. aggression and aid DPRK. So this is the second aspect of our work. And thirdly, we have been upholding the work of the party and the country, and we have made new progress in our work in the process of celebrating the centenary of the CPC and through the whole party's campaign to study party history. In recent years, we have worked with a strong sense of political responsibility and historical mission in making every effort to move forward our work. We have edited and published Xi Jinping on the history of the CPC, the quotations on the CPC history from Mao Zedong, Deng Xiaoping, Jiang Zemin, and Hu Jintao. We joined in the writing of a brief history of the CPC. These aforementioned three books are the main textbooks for the party members to study party history. We have we have also communicated with a cross-section of the society to help expand people's knowledge about the party history. And we have worked with others on the compilation of the books on the revolutionary spirit of the CPC. We participated in the preparation for the exhibition of the party history and we've been using new forms of media and have produced audio version of some of the aforementioned books. In addition to a 100 short episode documentary, 
on the 100 years of the Communist Party of China. And this uh, 100 short episode documentary has been warmly re received and it can be seen on the internet. In recent years, we have also enhanced party history and literature work at local levels. Local departments concerned have followed the Central Committee's overall requirements, made earnest efforts to put into practice the Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era. And we have also helped local departments with compilation of the books on party history and actively taken part in their education programs in a way that fits in well with the overall work of the party and the country. These 100 years of our party have been a century a century of keeping to the funding aspirations and mission, of breaking new ground against all odds, of opening up greater prospects, looking at where we have been from and where we are heading to. We recognize the imperative to study the party history to carry forward our proud tradition to remember what has brought us here, to embrace historic missions, and keep forging ahead. Now drawing on strengths from the past, we are confident that guided by the Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era, and under the leadership of the CPC Central Committee with Comrade Xi Jinping at its core, the 1.4 billion Chinese people will strive forward, and we will realize the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation, and we will build our country into a strong socialist modern country. We believe we will achieve our goals and our dreams. And now I am ready to take up your questions. Thank you, President Chu, for your briefing. Now the floor is open for questions. Please identify your media affiliation before asking your question. Thank you. I'm with CCTV. The CPC has led the Chinese people in scoring glorious achievements. This is witnessed and recognized by the whole world. My question is, what do you think are the CPC's main contributions in the last 100 years? Thank you. I thank you for your question. I think you have raised an important question, a question of great interest for many people. The 100 years from 1921 to 2021 have witnessed an extraordinary path or journey of the Communist Party of China. Over these 100 years, the CPC, rallying the Chinese people, has surmounted one obstacle after another and made accomplishment one after another. The CPC has united the people and led the Chinese people with bloodshed, sweat and tears, with courage, wisdom and resilience, we have written an extraordinary chapter in our history. If we are to recapture these past 100 years, I would like to underline 
the following four aspects. I try to summarize them into four profound changes. In other words, I believe the great contribution by the CPC to the nation can be summarized into four profound changes. First, the party's great contribution to this country lies in the fact that the party has profoundly changed the fate of contemporary China as a poor and weak country pushed around by others. If you look at the history, you will see that in the wake of the 1840 Opium War, China was plunged into a semi-colonial and semi-feudal society. We were invaded by Western imperialists, and the ruling class was a corrupt feudal court. And at that time, to fight against imperialism and against feudalism was the main task. And since its founding, the CPC has led the Chinese people in waging 28 years of heroic struggle Thus, new China was founded, a new epoch began. Since then, with over 70 years of strong efforts, China has moved to the first ranks in the world in terms of economy, science, national defense, and comprehensive national strengths. We are now the world's second biggest economy, and our international standing has risen like never before, and the Chinese nation once again stand proud in the world. Second, the CPC has made great contribution to the people, and such contribution lies in the fact that the CPC has profoundly changed the destiny of the Chinese people. In the past, the Chinese people were once bullied and suppressed, but since the CPC was founded, the Chinese people, under the leadership of the party, have become the owners of their own country and their own destiny. In the past, the Chinese people, especially farmers who represented the majority of the population, suffered impoverishment. They didn't even have sufficient food and clothing. But since the founding of New China under the leadership of the party, the Chinese people have truly become the masters of their own country, their own society, and their own lives. And people have gained a stronger sense of fulfillment, happiness, and security. The essence of common prosperity is gradually being felt in people's everyday life. Life expectancy on national average has increased from 35 before the liberation to the current 77. This is simply an epitome of the historical changes taking place in this country. Thirdly, I believe the Communist Party of China has made great contribution to the Chinese nation. And this is mainly reflected in the fact that the CPC has profoundly changed the destiny of the Chinese nation. Before the founding of New China, the Chinese nation was bullied by imperialists. 
the CPC has led the Chinese people in waging heroic struggles for national independence. Because of that, we were able to abolish the unequal treaties imposed by imperialists and their unfair prerogatives were gone forever. Altogether, before the funding of New China, there were some where about 2,000 unfair treaties imposed by imperialists on China. But since the funding of New China, the Chinese nation has gradually realized the historic leaps from being a sick man in East Asia to standing up and then to standing strong and then to growing rich. The whole nation has entered a new era and we are striving forward to the rejuvenation of the nation. And falsely, I believe the CPC has made great contributions to the rest of the world. Some people might describe it as CPC's great contribution to the development of socialism or of Marxism, but I would say CPC's contribution to the rest of the world. And such contribution is seen in the changes, profound changes in the international landscape and trajectory of the world. The CPC is a party to pursue happiness for the people and also to pursue progress of humanity. From day one, the CPC has kept the well-being of not only the Chinese people, but also of mankind in its own mind. Therefore, the CPC has always been safeguarding the principle of independence. We uphold the interests of developing countries. We believe that countries, regardless of their size, wealth, and strength, stand as equals. We stand against colonialism, hegemonism, and power politics. The CPC has been holding high the banner in the world. The socialism with Chinese characteristics, and because of such efforts, scientific socialism has taken on new and strong vitality in the 21st century's China. And those countries who hope to speed up their development while keeping it self-driven now may have a new option. This way, the CPC is contributing its own wisdom or the Chinese wisdom and Chinese solution to issues facing humanity. As I mentioned earlier, in 2019, I led a delegation to Western African countries for the promotion of uh, some books in the French version. And I was received by the president of Côte d'Ivoire. And he said that he is very fond of President Xi's works, especially uh, Xi Jinping on governance. And he said to me that uh, these writings provide wisdom for African countries to pursue better development to deliver more benefits to the people. And he said he draws much inspiration from those books. I, my delegation brought with us over a hundred books. And on our promotion ceremony, all the books have been warmly received by uh, the audience. 
and many local political leaders would like to take pictures with me and ask me more about those books. These are my remarks. Thank you. Next question, please. Thank you, Tai Kung Wei. The CPC has traversed a journey of a hundred years and has governed China for a long time, but it still remains young and energized. What is the uh, experience behind all this? Thank you. I thank you for your question. Um, I think you have raised a very important question. If we look at the history of the world, we have seen that there are there have been many political leaders who were very successful in the beginning when they actually took to the stage of history. But very soon, they failed in providing good governance. So for the CPC, as a party with a hundred years of history, why we uh, could maintain our resilience, our vitality, or to maintain our uh, useful energy, so to speak, I believe there are four important experiences. The first one is we have always kept to the forefront of the times. To follow the trend of the times is very important. Over the past 100 years, CPC has always used the basic Marxist theories to analyze the trend of the history, the properly handled relationship between China and the rest of the world. As a result, it has been able to grasp and make the most of the trends of the history to catch up with the trends of the time and to let the people and the country from strength to strength. This tells us that to have a new journey and to enter a new era, we must grasp new the characteristics of the new development stage, build new development paradigm. Second, the CPC has always been on the forefront of overcoming difficulties. Greater undertakings require pioneering spirit to overcome hardships. Over the past century, the CPC, against all odds, has moved forward fearlessly and opened up a new horizon for the country. When we face complex international situations or daunting tasks of reform and development at home, we must be able to fight the great struggle, have the spirit of uh, uh, struggle, and become more able to meet major challenges, diffuse major risks, overcome difficulties and obstacles and write new chapters of socialism with Chinese characteristics. Certainly, the CPC has always been upholding the fundamental interests of the people. What sets apart Marxist parties to others is the position for the people. Over the past century, the CPC has always been rallying the people, keeping close to the people. The CPC led the people in fighting against the landlords. It was for the fundamental interests of the people. It led the people in expelling Japanese invaders. It was for the fundamental interests of the people. It led the people in fighting against the KMT ruling class. It was for the fundamental interests of the people. It led the Chinese people in pursuing reform and opening up and advancing socialist modernization. These are all efforts for the fundamental interest of the people. We must always keep people above anything else in our heart. We must always make wholehearted service to our people. Only this way can we have the endorsement and support from the people, and can we have a source of uh, strength. And fourthly, the CPC has always 
set great store by its own development, self-purification, self-improvement, self-revolution and self-improvement. All of these have been very important in the party's development. At various historical stage, the CPC has made strong efforts in its own development. Just take, for instance, the years since reform and opening up, we have run several campaigns to maintain the advanced nature of the party. We have had the scientific outlook on development, keeping close to the people campaign, and the recent campaign of keeping to the funding aspirations and missions. All of these have proved instrumental for improving the party's capacity for leading the country. This also tells us that we always need to keep a spirit of reform and innovation, make an effort to strengthen party discipline, and only this way can we ensure the party can lead the entire nation towards great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. And only this way can we make the party the strong uh, leadership core in the process of uh, developing socialism with Chinese characteristics. The next question, please. Thank you. Iman from CATV, China Arab TV. Uh, since its 100th anniversary, uh, the Communist Party of China became uh, the world's largest political party with the biggest number of members. Uh, may I ask, how did the CPC develop so fast? Thank you. Let me ask Madam Jiang Shuping to answer this question. Well, thank you for asking this question. Indeed, as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the CPC, this is a question that we need to think about. After the 19th Party Congress, General Secretary Xi Jinping visited Shanghai and Jiaxing of Zhejiang Province to pay tribute to the venue of the party's first Congress, as well as the Red Boat of Zhejiang's Jiaxing. He quoted a poem, a simple beginning may promise enormous prospects to capture the development of the Communist Party of China. By the 31st of December 2019, the CPC has had a membership of 91.914 million and 4.5 681 primary level organizations. That means, starting with some 50 members, the CPC has become the world's largest Marxist political party. The CPC is the vanguard of the Chinese working class. In the meantime, it is the vanguard of the Chinese people and Chinese nation. Upon its founding, it has made communism as the supreme ideal and ultimate goal of the party. It has unswervingly carried the original aspiration founding mission of pursuing happiness for the Chinese people and rejuvenation for the Chinese nation. It is because of this that the CPC boasts extensive appeal, strong rallying power, and enduring leadership. For example, during the war against Japanese aggression, the Chinese communists have fought at the very first line against Japanese aggression, bringing hope for the survival of the Chinese nation as the pillar of the whole of nation battle. Yan An, the then headquarters of the CPC, was a sacred place. Numerous young patriots of China vowed, vowed that as long as they can still breathe, they will go to Yan An. By 1945, when the 7th Congress was convened, the CPC has a member a membership of 1.21 million. In the past 100 years, generation after generation of Chinese communists demonstrated the vanguard role in unremitting fearless struggles. In times of revolution and war, numerous communists in China have bravely sacrificed their valuable lives. 
No other country has a political party like the CPC that has made such enormous sacrifice for the independence of the nation and the liberation of the people. In times of peace and development, Chinese communists are fully committed to building a modern socialist country and serving the people wholeheartedly. Since the beginning of 2020, in the challenging battle against COVID-19, Chinese communists have responded to the call of the Central Committee to fight at the very front line against the virus. Their sense of responsibility is like numerous flags that have rallied the Chinese people and attracted a large number of CPC applicants. Party organizations at all levels have recruited new members among the medical workers, police officials, community workers, and other first-line responders. From wartime drafting to recruitment during COVID-19, it has been fully shown that the CPC has been expanding itself in the process of overcoming difficulties. The CPC is formed by the vanguard. While the quantity is important, we care even more about the quality. We are committed to keep strengthening party building maintain, and maintaining the vanguard nature and purity of the CPC so that the CPC always remains the strong leadership core of socialism with Chinese characteristics. Thank you. Next question, please. Thank you, with China Daily. The Institute of Party History and Literature of the CPC Central Committee is in task to compile and publish the important works of uh, General Secretary Xi Jinping and to study and promote Xi Jinping's thought on socialism with China's characteristics for a new era. Could you introduce the work that has been done in this area and what outcomes have been produced? Thank you. Well, thank you for the question, and let me take that question. The Institute was founded with a basic task or main task that is to edit and translate the important works by General Secretary Xi Jinping and study and promote Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new, for new era. Over the years, the institute was formed by three previous agencies of the CPC, the Research Institute, the Literature Institute, and the Translation Agency. So the work of the promotion of uh, the Xi Jinping thought was conducted by the previous uh, Literature Research Institute. Since the 18th Party Congress, the CPC Central Committee with General Secretary Xi Jinping as the core, focusing on the topic of the times, that is, what kind of chi socialism with Chinese character characteristics to uphold and develop in the new era and how to uphold and develop that has kept making theoretical innovations on the basis of practice and thus founded Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era, which was clearly stated in the report to the 19th Party Congress and was written into the charter of the party. The Institute has been following closely the theoretical innovations of the CPC Central Committee to show a comprehensive view of the scientific nature, core tenets, and implementation requirements of the Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era. We compiled the following categories of General Secretary Xi Jinping's works, comprehensive collections, thematic collections, and quotes. The quotes were compiled in accordance with specific 
themes. They included paragraphs of the General Secretary's quotes. So over the years, we have compiled 66 titles of the General Secretary Xi Jinping's important works. Among that, from March of uh, 2018, we compiled 41 titles. For example, on General Secretary Xi Jinping's statements on the Chinese dream, we published Xi Jinping's quotes on the Chinese dream of great national rejuvenation. On the five-pronged framework and four-pronged strategy, we published Xi Jinping's quotes on completing the building of a moderately prosperous society in all respects. On the eight elaborations and 14 points of the Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era, which were laid out in the 19th Party Congress's report, we published General Secretary Xi Jinping's elaborations on the party's leadership over all fields of work, on comprehensively deepening reform, on comprehensively advancing law-based governance, on building a community with a shared future for mankind, and on the holistic view on national security. Regarding General Secretary Xi Jinping's important instructions on relevant work, we published Xi Jinping's quotes on opposing formality and bureaucratism, on preventing risks and challenges and responding to emergencies, on coordinating COVID-19 response and economic and social development, and to collaborate with the party's education programs, we also published General Secretary's other works, for example, to collaborate with the party's education program regarding keeping in mind the original aspiration and uh, remaining true to the founding mission, we compiled Xi Jinping's quotes on this topic. And for this year's uh, education program for the history of the party, we published Xi Jinping on the history of the CPC as well as other titles. These important works have reflected the evolution and the main content of Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era, recorded the journey of the CPC Central Committee with General Secretary Xi Jinping at the core, rallying and leading the, all par the whole party, the whole country, and people of all ethnic groups to uphold and develop socialism with Chinese characteristics in the new era and serve as textbooks for the party and all walks of lives to study and implement Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era. Thank you. Next question, please. Thank you. With the Xinhua News Agency, General Secretary Xi Jinping proposed a vision on building a community with a shared future for mankind. The vision has received extensive attention and warm response from the international community. Could you tell us about the work that your institute has done to promote this vision and any new plans? Thank you. This is also another very good question. Let me give the floor to Mr. Yang Mingwei. Well, thank you for your interests in the overseas 
promotion of General Secretary Xi Jinping's works. In recent years, the Institute attached great importance to the overseas publicity of Xi Jinping's thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era and paid special attention to the translation and pub publishing of General Secretary Xi's works. This helps the international community to have a better understanding of the Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era. Help shape an objective view of the CPC's governance philosophy, approach, and achievements, and help promote governance experience share, sharing and mutual learning among civilizations. Let me take the book Xi Jinping on building a community with a shared future for mankind published by the Institute as an example. This important book was published domestically in 2018, and after that we translated and published that into the English, French, Japanese, and Russian languages. These versions have helped foreign readers help have a more in-depth understanding of the idea of community with a shared future for mankind as well as Xi Jinping thought on diplomacy as well as China's foreign policy. We have also conducted the launch ceremony for the French version of that book as well as a launching ceremony for the English version, which was touched on by the President. We also convened a high-level forum on China-Africa community with a shared future and a workshop on the English and French versions of Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping on community with a shared future for mankind to promote this important book in various means. Also to give the foreign readers a closer view of General Secretary Xi Jinping's thinkings on putting people's safety and life first and building a, a global community of health for all, as well as China's success in tackling COVID-19. We published the English version of the title, Xi Jinping quotes on coordinating COVID-19 response and economic and social development. To give foreign readers a closer view of the CPC's major contribution to global public poverty alleviation rallying the Chinese people, as well as China, uh, China's poverty reduction path, path and theory, as well as the founding mission of the CPC, we translated and published the English version of General Secretary Xi Jinping's remarks at the Commendation Conference on Poverty Alleviation of China. These important works by the General Secretary were very well received worldwide. Some foreign uh, political leaders and ex-scholars highly commended the book General Secretary Xi Jinping on Community with a Shared Future for Mankind and on this very initiative. They believe that China has become a global political and economic major country. And in terms of thinking and action, China has proposed this very creative idea of building a community with a shared future for mankind and the Belt and Road Initiative. They mean a lot to the future development of the world. This vision of building a community with a shared future for mankind holds broad and deep significance. They echoed extensively among other countries, particularly African countries. Xi Jinping thought and diplomacy is rich in content and provides not only China solution to global challenges, it also means an innovation on the theories on international relations as well as on human development. Thank you. Next question, please. As Guangming Daily, as a special agency on the study of the party's history and theories, what is the role of your institute in the party history learning and education campaign, and what specific work has been done by the institute? Well, let me take uh, this very question. 
Since the inception of the education program for party history, the Institute has taken serving the education program as a major political task. We fully leveraged our ex expertise and resources, provide all-round service for the education program, and facilitated the solid progressing of the program. First, we edited and compiled the authoritative uh, books and the vivid textbooks for the education program, which was touched upon by my colleagues previously. For example, we compiled and published Xi Jinping on the, his the history of the CPC, Mao Zedong, Deng Xiaoping, Jiang Zemin, and Hu Jintao on the history of the CPC, as well as the brief history of the CPC. As we know, over 140 million copies of the three books have been issued and they were very extensively acclaimed. 58 million copies of Xi Jinping on the CPC's history were issued. Second, we have been selecting experts of the Institute to give lectures on the history of the party. We selected 14 experts on party history to join the central le central uh, lecture group to give lectures. In total, there are 25 members of the group, and uh, 14 are from our institute. They traveled to 15 provinces and conducted a total number of uh, over 110 lectures, either arranged by the Central Committee or as invited. They went to colleges, communities, enterprises, and factories to conduct exchanges and interactions on the issues that uh, party members are interested in. Other party history experts of the Institute, apart from the 14 experts who were members of the Central Lecture Group, those other experts of the Institute also conducted over 200 lectures for other agencies. Third, we have been organizing uh, work on the uh, writing of uh, theoretical essays. Leaders and experts of the Institute have written extensively on the People's Daily, Guangming Daily, and Xiu Shi Magazine. Over 10 important essays were published on these papers. Some dozens of other essays were also published on some other uh, newspapers. I myself have written uh, two essays on the Guangming Daily, two pretty long essays. In February, I published an essay of the 100th, 100-year uh, glorious journey of the CPC, and later I wrote, I wrote another essay, which is the party history and uh, works of the CPC in the past 100 years. I think those two essays were very well received and have helped us advance the education program of the party history. Fourth, we have uh, rolled out new media products based on the internet. We produced 
The 100 years of party history, daily facts, they were rolled out throughout the internet so far, over 1,700 websites and uh, 43,000 WeChat or microblog accounts have reposted these uh, the, the, this program, which were which was read 2.13 billion times, we also produced a documentary together with Jiangsu uh, uh, Party Committee, which was named "Forced into Steel: The 100 Years of the CPC," which was also very well received. So far, it has been uh, watched 2.4 billion times. All these products serve as very uh, important materials for the education program of party, party history. Fifth, we have been doing a meticulous job in reviewing work. In the first half of this year, we have reviewed drafts of 768 titles containing 268 million words and uh, 33,000 pictures submitted by relevant uh, departments. It has been a very challenging work. Our experts have been working around the clock to review the drafts to provide strong support for the reviewing work of books in celebration of the party's centenary. We reviewed over 80 projects of exhibitions and over 30 uh, television and uh, film works. So far, over 200 of employees of the Institute have uh, carried out over 100 tasks of uh, the uh, production or reviewing of exhibitions, books, and uh, video works. Sixth, we have coordinated and provided guidance for local level party history and literature departments to better uh, play their role. There are around 2,800 uh, of such agencies. So in terms of uh, the day-to-day uh, operation, we are supposed to provide guidance to those agencies. They have also been speeding up efforts to compile the basic works regarding local party history and textbooks for party history education, as well as making good use of the red resources locally. We have been providing timely and active support and guidance to all those local agencies. Thank you. Next question, please. Thank you, China Youth Daily. The CPC has paid a lot of attention to party history and learning and education among the younger generation and stress the importance to utilize red resources and pass on the party's tradition to future generations. I want to ask what have the party history and literature departments been doing in this area? I ask Mr. Liu Rongang to take this question. Thank you for your question. The young people are the future and hope of our nation. General Secretary Xi Jinping has stressed the importance to do a good job in educating the younger generation, particularly in telling the stories about the CPC, about revolution, and about the heroes well to nurture their love for the party, for the country, and for socialism. 
and pass on the party's traditions and revolutionary spirit to future generations. The party's history is the most vivid and convincing textbook, and an important medium of the CPC's fine traditions. Diverse and in-depth party history learning and education activities are an important means to pass on such traditions to future generations. The Institute of Party History and Literature of the Party Central Committee takes very seriously party history learning and education among the young people. Considering their distinct features of uh, this age group, we have constantly sought innovation in content, form and method. Let me try to cover them one by one. First, with well-designed plans and arrangements, we have supplied rich resources for party history learning and education among the young people. Our institute, working together with the Ministry of Education, the Central Committee of the Communist Youth League, China Central Television and the China Education Television, has compiled booklets on uh, party history as well as all four histories for university, middle school and primary school students, organized the National Party History Knowledge Contest for university students and national competition on telling the CPC story, produced the TV program The Flag History Telling by the Chinese Youth, held a classic film watching and education activities surrounding the party's century-old history. These efforts provided strong support for the party history learning and education among the young people. Second, we have tapped deep into education resources, promoted knowledge on party history, and enhanced the real effect of party history learning and education among the younger generation. Party history and literature departments at the central and local levels have taken the initiative and organized party history communication events for youth groups these include opening special study columns and campus-based party history program called the class to start a new semester in middle and primary schools, sharing a series of party history stories on new media platforms, and created a large Chinese painting scroll themed on party history. Such diverse activities have encouraged the younger generation to revisit the glorious journey of the party and carry forward the great revolutionary spirit. Third, we have adopted innovative means and utilized the important role of the Internet. Just now, President Xu had briefed you about some of the th work we have done in this area. We, uh, this include 11-episode documentary, a 100-episode mini-documentary entitled The Struggles of the CPC in 100 Years, mm, opened a special online column called 100 Years of CPC History, Daily Facts, and introduced an audio app called Pioneer for 100 Years. These programs are designed to fit the new media and received warm response from the young people. Over a long period, we have worked with dedication to make party history learning and education among the younger generation more targeted and effective so that the young people can get a better sense of the party's arduous journey and glorious achievements. We will summarize the good experience and practices in time, play a bigger role in strengthening party history education for the young people, and contribute our part to sustaining the party's traditions and nurturing future generations to carry forward the cause of socialism. Next question, please. Thank you. With People's Daily, on his recent visit to the exhibition on CPC history themed Staying True to the Founding Mission, General Secretary Xi Jinping stressed the importance to bear in mind the cause of the party's struggle, shoulder the historic mission, and draw strength from its history to forge ahead. I want to ask, what kind of strength can we draw from the party history? Thank you. I would like to take this uh, very good question from the People's Daily. 
During his visit to the exhibition called Staying True to the Founding Mission on CBC History, General Secretary Xi Jinping stressed that point, as you mentioned. We must truly understand the importance of this work. The party's history is the most vivid and convincing textbook. Such is the conclusion by General Secretary Xi Jinping himself. He has also repeatedly stressed this point. The party history learning and education campaign aims to boost the morale and set a clear direction by promoting the party's journey of struggle and great accomplishments, to strengthen conviction and pull strength by promoting the party's glorious tradition and fine work style, and to inspire wisdom and enhance integrity by promoting the party's pioneering undertakings and historical experience, so that all members of the party will better grasp Marxist theories, strengthen confidence and faith, carry forward the party's traditions and improve actual work, and draw strength from the party history to forge ahead. I have been working on the study of history of the party for many years. My feeling is that there are two stages for us to study party history. First is to know what is, what happened in history. That is the stage of acquiring knowledge. And the second stage, I believe, is knowing why. Why do we need to study history? And that is because we can acquire wisdom. The study of history is not a pragmatic discipline. It is a discipline for the greater use. Some people believe it is less useful than other disciplines, or even useless. But I believe the study of this subject is of greater use, because it is a source of greater wisdom. As General Secretary Xi Jinping said, the party's history is the most vivid and convincing textbook. It provides the strength and wisdom for us to forge ahead, and that explains the purpose of the party history learning and education campaign. As for the requirements of learning the four histories, General Secretary Xi Jinping made it very clear that it is for all members of the party to better grasp Marxist theories, strengthen confidence and faith, carry forward party's traditions, and improve actual work. In my understanding, this is to gain a source of strength in our work, to gain strength of belief, to gain strength from moral virtues, and to gain strength of action. So I believe studying party history for us is an important opportunity for us to gain wisdom and strength in mainly four aspects. First, wisdom and strength from theories. Theory is power. That was emphasized by General Secretary Xi Jinping on the 20th of February on the Mobilization Conference for the Party History Learning and Education Campaign. Over the past 100 years, China has constantly adapted Marxism to the Chinese context and formed many innovative theoretical outcomes from Mao Zedong thought, Deng Xiaoping theory, the important thought of three represents, and the scientific outlook on development to Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era. The history of CPC is a history of constantly adapting Marxism to the Chinese context and a history of constantly making theoretical innovation and creation. 
Such innovation and creation are based on past achievements and looking to this is precisely a unique strength of the Communist Party of China. Party history tells us that with strong theories, we can have a strong party. Therefore, in party history learning and education, we must study the achievements, struggles, experience, and fine traditions of the party, find the answers to why the CBC has succeeded. In my view, the CPC has an important theoretical tool that guides its work, which is a unique advantage over other political parties. In Yan'an, Mao Zedong has emphasized in his speeches and articles that Marxism is the greatest wisdom of humanity. The CPC is a political party of the working class and a vanguard of the Chinese people in the meantime. And Marx and Engels said that the workers has taken theory as their important tool. And has taken up Marxism as their intellectual weapon. Marxism, as humanity's greatest wisdom, has supported the thriving and promising working class. Adapting Marxism to the Chinese context gave rise to the CPC's theory. Therefore, a power theoretical guidance is a unique strength of the CPC. And secondly, we must find the answers to why has Marxism worked and why the CPC has succeeded. Since 1911, there has been two waves of political party formation. Yesterday, we did we saw the release of a white paper on the political party uh, in China, which cited a widely accepted conclusion among scholars that there were once 300 political parties, and I even heard a number at 680 plus. But among several hundred political parties, who succeeded in China? The answer is the Communist Party of China. In 1921, the party was tiny. As Madame Jiang just said at the opening at the preparatory meeting of the Seventh Party Congress, Mao Zedong said that the party was quite simple at the very beginning and very small. We started with only 13 members, ranging from 19 years old to 45 years old. The age difference was 28 years old. Mao Zedong was 28. After several days of meeting, they moved to the, the territory of the French in Shanghai, and they had to move to a red boat in Jiaxing because of the patrolling local police intrusion. Then in 1949, 
Mao Zedong wrote an article on the bankruptcy of a nihilist history. He refuted several essays written by others and reviewed the 28 years of history of the CPC. He said the CPC has succeeded in China and will soon found a new China. Back then, he said, the founding of the CPC is an earth-shaking major event. It has led the, the Chinese people in fighting feudalism and colonialism and succeeded in the liberation of the whole nation. Therefore, from the century-old history, we can certainly draw wisdom and strength. We need to also ex uh, pound on why Marxism has worked in China. In February 1948, Marx was, Karl Marx was 30 years old. Together with Engels, they published a famous essay that marked the beginning of Marxism. But then it took a long time for it to come to China. Marx, the Marxist viewpoint was first appearing in China after half a century. Based on our research, it was in 1899 on a Christian local paper in Shanghai. There was a man called Tsar Kang who wrote in English in the title of the, great the Study of Great Harmony. In my judgment, this person, Tsai Er Kang, must be a foreigner not a Chinese, otherwise he would write it, have written it in Chinese. And a British preacher who came to China a long time before that translated the piece into Chinese. He translated Marx into Ma Ke Si in the Chinese language which we kept using to this day. Then, in 1915, Liang Qichao and Kang Youwei Wei also wrote articles on Marxism. They were in Japan in exile and writing articles to introduce Marxist theories and viewpoint. Mr. Liang Qichao is very good at the Chinese classics, very good writer, very eloquent in classic Chinese, but he's uh, less as good as a translator. He translates Marx as Mai Ka Shi in the Chinese language. The Ka was in, as in Kashka, Shi as in soldier, Shi Bing. So if you, look, if you ever encounter the name Mai Ka Shi, you would know that it's actually Marx.
Then there was a. We put this Marxist-Leninist movement as our leading theory. In one of the secret meetings that we used Marxism as the guiding theory for the CPC, and again, more than twenty some years after that, Marxism was officially established as its position today. Such is the process of introducing Marxism to China and then using. Theory to guide China's revolution. Seventy years. Seventy years. It is because of the need in China that Marxism was introduced and played its important role. The achievements we have made in developing socialism with Chinese characteristics have proved that Marxism. Has worked, and is truly a powerful tool, a powerful theoretical tool for the CPC. And the third question is why socialism with Chinese characteristics is good for China. Such are the three major questions we need to ask ourselves in studying party history. They are. Related with each other. Once we find answers to these three major questions, we will be enlightened as on why we have achieved what we have achieved today, moving onward from completing the first centenary goal to the second. Plenary goal. It will inspire us to forge ahead and remain a powerful theoretical driving force. Second, I think we can gain wisdom and strength from belief. General Secretary Xi Jinping pointed out. That the belief in Marxism and faith in socialism and communism is the political soul of communists and the spiritual pillar with which communists withstood all tests. The CPC has emerged from one challenge after another and scored great achievements. Fundamentally, it is because. The party has a lofty ideal and pursuit, and because in the party's journey of struggle, there have emerged a great number of revolutionaries willing to die for the cause, heroes who fought with determination, and models who made selfless sacrifices. These are a glorious page. In our history, I'd like to tell you something about one person who is called Xia Minghan. He was only 28 years old in 1928 when he made the ultimate sacrifice. He was born in a rich family. He was not joining the revolution to have something to eat. After the failure of the Great Revolution in 1927 and 1928, he went to Wuhan in Hubei Province and was arrested by the enemy. After three days, he was convicted and executed. The executor asked him whether he had something to say. He got the a pen and paper. He famously wrote, "Death is not to be feared." The the mind is most important. As long as we adhere to the right path, there will be successes that complete my course. Another name was Yang Jingyu, who fought in the Northeast United 
uh, front against aggression. He fought day and night and found himself to be the only one left in the battle. A local villager advised that let's surrender and keep our life going. Our people, some people concluded that if Mr. Yang Jingyu surrendered, the Japanese would not have killed him, but instead would give him a high rank in the military and ask him to fight against the Chinese armies. But Yang Jingyu said, if we all surrendered, will there be a China left? So he went on fighting. The Japanese were totally puzzled. There was no one sending food to him. He was trapped in the snow mountain. How did he survive? So the Japanese said, let's have an autopsy to see what's left in him. But they found not a single grain. There was only some remains of a leather belt. The Japanese were shocked to see all this. Another hero was Guo Yonghuai. Guo Yonghuai was a scientist who made major contribution to the development of the atomic bomb, missile, and satellite in China. He was friend to Yang Jingyu and Deng Jiaxian. Deng Jiaxian was also a scientist who made important contribution to this endeavor. He got a doctorate degree in the United States and came back to China. It was in, in 1868 when he returned to Beijing after he got important knowledge on atomic bomb. The flight he took fell from the sky and crashed. The rescuers went to the site and found two bodies clinging together and unable to be separated. When the bodies were finally separated, they found piles of data intact on the experiment result. One of the bodies was found to be a guard of uh, Guo Yonghuai. In Guo Yonghuai's company, which was based in the north of Qinghai Lake, Wang Ruobing was there to compose a famous song called In the Place Far Away in the 1930s. Then the plant number 21 was built there. The plant adopted a motto which was called to do an earth-shaking deed and live a low-profile life. They are willing to keep their names hidden while making a major contribution to the country's development. Wang Ganchang was one of the workers who worked in that factory. He disappeared for 17 years after joining the cause and changed his name to Wang Jing. It was thanks to the selfless 
sacrifice of all these people that China was able to establish its position as a major country in the world. There are numerous other stories about the heroes in our history. In different sectors, different views, different departments, there are more than a hundred what we call great spirits that arise from the touching deeds of such people. General Secretary Xi Jinping at the conference on poverty alleviation outlined the spirit of poverty alleviation. We have managed to lift 700 million people out of poverty and 100 million since the 18th Party Congress. More than 1,800 people made the ultimate sacrifice on the front line of alleviating poverty. They contributed their life to this great cause. Therefore, in party history learning and education, we must strengthen our commitment to the lofty ideal of communism and the common idea of socialism with Chinese characteristics, and better adhere to and develop socialism with Chinese characteristics under the conditions of the new era. Only when party history is well studied can we truly remember where the red political power came from and how new China was founded. Doubly cherish socialism with Chinese characteristics created by the party and firm up our confidence in our path, theories, system, and culture. These are the four elements of socialism with Chinese characteristics. That's what the Chinese people have been fighting for over the past century. And the fundamental asset of the Chinese nation, we must work relentlessly to further develop this system. Third, we can gain wisdom and strength from the great spirits. I have already elaborated on that. Fourth, we can acquire wisdom and strength from actions. General Secretary Xi Jinping pointed out that the century-old history of our party is a history of fulfilling the party's original mission and a history of truly connecting to the people and breathing the same breath and sharing the same future with them. The country is the people and the people are the country. From Shi Kumen on Xinye Road to Tiananmen on Fuxing Road, all the efforts, struggles and sacrifice of the CPC in the last 100 years were made to deliver happiness to the Chinese people and achieve rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. In party history learning and education, we must summarize experience, use it in reality, and improve actual work. To use theoretical studies for solving real problems. And we must truly serve the people to strengthen the awareness of being public servants and working for the people so as to solve real problems for the people and to let our people have a greater sense of gain, happiness and security. In 1940s, Mao Zedong said this in Yan'an. Freedom to the world is a subject of philosophers. Freedom to the people is a subject of Marxism. We must not only talk the talk, we must walk the walk as communists. Such 
is the wisdom and strength we must acquire from party le history, learning, and education. That's my answer to your question. Thank you. I thank President Chu for his wonderful elaboration. For the sake of time, uh, such is the end of uh, the press conference today. Thank you. Thank you all for coming.